Good, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, thank you for joining us. I am joined today by Edith Surreal. How are you? I'm so good. How are you? Thank you for having me. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. I am. I'm so happy to have you on because I'm. I've been such a fan, and when Aww. you agreed to, you agreed to come on, I was like, hell yes, this is a. <laughs> This is amazing. So, but yeah, how are you doing anyway? I'm really good. I'm uh, getting ready for a couple big weeks in front of me. It's a little, it's a little sunny or a little rainy here in Philadelphia. So, just enjoying like a lazy Sunday. Um, but overall, doing really good. Excited for what's coming up. Oh, how are you? I, I'm good. Yeah, I, I'm the same. I'm, out, I'm having a lazy day myself. I'm. Uh, I've got a day off work tomorrow, which is nice. I'm. And I'll, I'll be honest, I'm on countdown. I'm at work Tuesday and Wednesday, and then I've got 18 days off. So I'm, uh, no. yes. So I, I have never been so ready for some time off. And it's, um, what a time to have off as well. I mean, we've got WrestleMania weekend coming up, but it's, uh, anybody would think that I booked this time off on purpose, but you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's exciting times. And uh, it's horrible out here, though. Obviously, good old UK weather. It's windy. It's cloudy. Um, what you come to expect over here in the UK, but uh, yeah, hey, we got the same weather here today, so like, well, I'll, I'll join you in that. There we go, there we go. I mean, I'd rather be over there than here. I I, I love America, so I, you know, I can't wait to get back over there. I really oh, can't. Yeah. But um, I mean, I'll ask you that straight away before we get into like your career, what's coming up and stuff. I mean, it is coming to the UK something you'd love to do to wrestle over here? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Um. You know, I think a lot of the style, the wrestling style I learned is, you know, I've learned some of the catch style, the whole mm. old style. So um, just for that reason alone, knowing that that is kind of like a centerpiece of UK wrestling and just wrestling in Europe in general, I'd love to do that. But I've never been to Europe. I've never been over there before. So um, it's definitely on my bucket list of something to do. And I'm starting to build more connections there. So hopefully once travel restrictions and we're yeah. open again like that can be something i can do in the next year but definitely really high on my list it's just yeah I mean, that, I mean, international travel in general that's something i love about you as well i mean when i watch you wrestle there is a i want to say almost a world of sportness uh, to you i mean is, is the british style something you've studied um not necessarily like not as a fan but just it's a style that, you know, I was trained by Mike Quackenbush, who's one of yep. my trainers. It's also Drew Gulak. Um, so that's just something that kind of comes with what I was shown. And when I kind of pictured my wrestling style, what it was going to be when I first started wrestling, it was not necessarily going to be catch wrestling. It just happened yep. to be something that I naturally pick up on. I think it really suits my, like, body shape of you know really long <laughs> uh gangly <laughs> limbs just seem to really work with getting like you know locking a hold on or finding my way out of a hold so it was just a natural style that I picked up on and I just keep going with it yeah cause I was saying to a friend of mine because I was telling him that you're coming on he's a big fan as well and we both actually said almost at the same time how much would it be like the greatest thing ever Edith Surreal versus Zack Sabre Jr and was like <gasps> Oh my god, I, I never thought about that until, until we mentioned it in the cars. Like that would be incredible. I mean, very yes. you know, he's he's another guy like you said. He's very uh, he's long and gangly and you know mm -hmm. a submission specialist. I mean, is that someone you'd love to mix it up with? Oh my gosh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like that'd be no big deal. But yeah, no, I would, I would absolutely love that. <laughs> I, I study him a lot now. Just yeah. um, just his technique and knowing how he can, is able to go from each hold. You know, you're not just always stuck in this one thing. Like, he locks it on, yanks yeah. on you, and then finds another way to put you in something else. So, I, um, yeah, I admire his style a lot. And I, you know, luckily had the chance to meet him a few times when he came through uh, through Chikara uh, over yeah. the last couple of years. Yeah, he's a nice guy. I had the chance to meet him a couple of years ago. He did a show in the UK, and I, I had the chance to meet him then. He's a really, really nice guy. And then to actually watch him live, you know, you, you sit there, it's like, my God, this guy, he's so good. I mean, he's just, he, he's, he's it was against, um, I forget who it was against now, but he was just turning his opponent inside out. And I was like, this is just, it's incredible. He really yeah. is. I noticed, obviously, I'm doing the research and you've been trained by a few people, but obviously you mentioned Drew Gulak. I mean, what was that like? Because I think Drew is such an underrated talent. Oh, yeah, he's an incredible wrestler. He's incredibly talented. He gets... Especially like TV wrestling, like yeah. he gets it unlike unlike anyone else. Just mm. um, 
just how to put wrestling on in that presentation. Um, so he's brilliant there, but he is tough. Oh my gosh, he's a tough, tough trainer. You are uh, you are sweating bullets when you're at a class with Drew. <laughs> Um, and anytime he gives you feedback, it's quite terrifying, but you know, he's, he's brilliant. And, you know, he's, he definitely cares a lot about like young talent and doing, um, what he can to help, um, bring up, you know, younger wrestlers or, or any kind of wrestler. He's always, he always goes out of his way to give feedback even today. Like, you know, um, he'll watch a match or he'll give me a call or something like that. And, and he's always available for questions and stuff. So like having someone like him, um, yeah to reach out to uh when i need help with something like it's it's so valuable and and yeah he's brilliant i love like i don't know i watch a lot of his matches and find little things to borrow or to steal yeah. or to like whatever just like really smart ways to make things look different and yeah. um to kind of catch your opponent by surprise so yeah definitely hugely underrated and look and also like what he does with his character on tv anything that wwe has needed him to do he's been able to do you know like two or five live was like we want more character so he had a whole character in his pocket with the powerpoint thing um they're yeah. like oh we we need something a little more serious and he's like i got that too we need you in the 24 or the 24 7 belt it's like great i can do that he's got a promo ready for anything like yeah. he's he, ha he has all the tools he he can do it all so yeah, yeah. I, I, i'm glad I'm glad you mentioned that because I've said that before. He's he's the all round. He's an all rounder. I mean, mm -hmm. I I I compared him really to Kurt Angle back in sort of ninety nine, two thousand, two thousand and one, where Kurt Angle was hilarious. But as soon as the bell rung, you know Kurt Angle could kill you. And yes. I think, I think Drew's very very similar to Kurt Angle in that respect. Mm -hmm. uh, it, Absolutely. It, yeah. Like he gets. He gets every aspect of pro wrestling, from the performance to the technical aspect of it to the business side of it, all of it. He he gets. Yeah, I mean, I, I, what I want to talk about as well is because I, I, I'm fascinated by by yourself. Uh, I mean, uh, the origins of, of blank to apricot to Edith Surreal. Mm -hmm. I mean, am I correct in thinking you? you I feel like you're telling me a story, like an, an artist would paint a picture, and it's the creation and then another creation. Am I am I right in that? Yeah, I, I and I think it's more it's the same creation. It's just a continual continual iteration. You know, like I don't want to be someone who has the one character right out the gate and then it just is beholden to that um, for my whole career. You know, I don't want to do the same style. I don't want to look the same. Like that's just not me. I get bored. Um, you know, I like being very creative with things, so I have to do something different. And I look at people like. You know, like Lady Gaga or Madonna or, you know, any one of those, like, long-lasting pop stars, they don't do the same thing all the time. They're constantly evolving. Yeah. And you're going with whatever the current style is or you're determining what that new style is. You know, I'd love to be in a position where I'm the one who's setting the trends of what wrestling looks like. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, just continuing to evolve. Um, and especially with the way opportunities are opening up for me um i needed to kind of expand what my character was and what the name was like it was um being still alive with apricots and pears was wonderful but it, it felt a little bit limiting in yeah. what i could do so now i have my own name it's something that i created it's you know something that i can own and just continue to move forward with so yeah, yeah and I, I love the name it's i I, I was saying to Callum, I said that the name just, I feel like I, I need to, I feel like it should be a, a show on Netflix, like a superhero or something, you know, it's like, yeah. that, that's, I, I love it, I love it all, you know, it, it's just, it's the greatest name. I know, oh, you've got, I, I know you have a, you are an artist, aren't you? I mean, do you take a lot of that into the wrestling then? Because obviously it is an art form itself. Yes. Oh, I'm a, oh my gosh, absolutely. So before I was a wrestler, I was kind of a freelance graphic designer, illustrator, and artist. So I did a lot of like solo shows and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, you know, I went to school for graphic design, so it's always been a huge part of my life. And I definitely see how it helps with me as a wrestler because I look at, um, you know, I follow an artistic process. I follow a creative process when I'm thinking about my wrestling name or my yeah. look or moves I'm gonna do or, um, things I want to do in a match, anything like that. I kind of use that ex exact same artist structure. I mean, like right here, I have a sketchbook. I have it right in front of me. And yeah. 
I always keep this with me because you never know when you're going to get inspiration, right? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times it's like whenever there's that dull moment in your life, whenever you're bored, right? We have to be bored. So whenever yep. you feel totally bored, it hits you. So I do this a lot like in the shower because it's just a mundane, boring thing. You're, yep. It's relaxing. And then all of a sudden just like, oh my gosh, I can get into this with this. And then I'll like run out in a towel, find my sketchbook. And that's why it's like all wet like, <laughs> <laughs> because it happens all the time. And I quickly write it down or right now my day job, I, I drive, I have a driving job. So it's a little dull, right? I mean, you're just, yep. you're just driving and but that's so good for any kind of creative person to have that time where your mind is just shut down. You're not yeah. looking at the phone. You're not watching TV. You're not doing anything like that. Like it's just, you're going into autopilot and all of a sudden yeah. that's where the, the ideas start generating in the back of your head. So I can't write when I'm driving, but I pull out like voice memos and it's just like, I do promos and I do just like, Oh, remember to like try this move tonight in training or something like that. So I think all of that comes from, that's how I handled being an artist is, you know, five years ago, this would have just been full of drawings and it still is, but um, now it's like, um, just like sequences and notes and like moves and stuff like that. So yeah, definitely that, that whole process. And also like looking at what inspires me, you know, yeah. a lot of wrestlers, I feel like are just looking at other wrestlers for their style mm -hmm. or what kind of moves they're going to do. So it's okay. What can I, what can I look at that no one else is looking at? And that will make me different. And when I'm different, it makes me a commodity or a, is that the, I don't know if that's the right word, but it makes me unique. You know, yeah. there's no other Edith Surreal out there. So you need this one Edith on your show. Um, so that's what you do to set yourself apart as an artist and an illustrator and just doing it here. Yeah, I know you obviously mentioned the moves as well, because I have noticed as well, going back to almost like the where the sport style, um, I feel like sometimes you're creating art in your moves as well, because you're almost, it's almost like a sculpture. I mean, you're almost <laughs> catching a moment. You know, am I right in that? Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot about like, um, yeah, when I'm, when I'm working on new moves or I'm in training, I was like, what does this look like in a still frame? Um, or like a short gif. Like I remember Joey Janelle was a great one. He came through Chikara, um, had a couple matches while I was there. And when I was working on things before the match, he pulled me aside. It was just like, when I think of moves, I think about what it looks like in a gif. Yeah. Because that's a huge part about how wrestling is shared these days. It's this short five second gif. Some people, that's how you follow a whole show or a whole pay-per-view or whatever it is. If you're not watching it, you can see the gifs. Yeah. Um, that's super common, especially when you want to consume all the wrestling and there's no time for that. So that's how wrestling consumes. So that we have to be thoughtful of that um, as like another thing. And usually that's just the spot. That's just one single move or one mm -hmm. single hold or something like that. But I wanted to think about how that looks because it's also a very low quality image. It's very choppy. It's small. It's on your phone. You have to get your attention as you're scrolling. So that's all that that has to go into what you're thinking about your moves. And then you also have to cater to the live audience and thinking about like, what story am I trying to tell? Um, how does this look in the back of the room? You know, your big strikes, whatever. Yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely think of that small gif. Uh, also photos. I realized I, I wasn't always having good photographs yeah. during matches because I was moving so quickly. So I want that because that's social media content. That's what we do nowadays. So yeah, I get a hold on and like look for the photographers. Like, are we good? Are we good? Does this look good? Does this look different? And if it looks different, that means more people are going to be interested in it. Like, we all do the same moves. Like, there's only so many wrestling moves you can do, and you don't want to be making up moves all the time. I mean, sometimes it's okay, but that makes things a little complicated if you do things so differently and you have to like teach someone how to do it or like I don't know. So. What can I do that's a little different? What can I do that's not going to get in anyone's way? So always thinking about that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, it works because, I mean, I, I, I'm a, um, a huge fan of yours. And I think a lot of that is for watching you in the ring, doing things like that and, and capturing them moments. And I'm like, this is incredible. I'm like, I, I could watch you all night long. So, I mean, you're oh, doing yeah. something right. So you really are. I'm, <laughs> I, mean, I, I was watching some of your work last night. And I do have to ask you because it's uh, somebody we spoke to a few weeks ago. Um, and that's Solo Darling. 
Uh, yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, Solo and yourself, I mean, how, how important Solo being to you? Because we, we had her on a few weeks ago and she was just so much fun. We, we, we barely spoke. I mean, she took over. <laughs> yes. Yo, I mean, I think I was there. I think we were we had plans that day. So I snuck in while you guys were recording. So <laughs> I remember that. That's why your voice is so familiar. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's like, I mean, she's my best friend. And, you know, going through being a young wrestler, having someone like her to help kind of guide me through this complicated industry is is super helpful. But also like, in my transition, you know, her being such an ally in that, yeah, um, just being so supportive and teaching me things. Like, I never got to be a teenage girl, so, like, there's a lot of things I don't know how to do. And she yeah. was able to show me how to do my hair and help with makeup. And, you know, we go shopping all the time. So, like, just having that as, like, a young trans woman is, is so yeah. valuable and just, it's really hard. There's a lot of really hard things in my life and just having someone like her to rely on and to like talk to and you know she always gives great advice so she's the best friend I could ever have so um yeah, yeah I love her so much and so thankful for her that she's in this industry too and we can like go do these things together and she can be a safe person and an ally and and she's the best uh she was <laughs> her and yeah, too, I remember like we, her. Were we were speaking to her and she just, I mean, we asked one thing and then I think 50 minutes later, we got to the next thing. It was like, <laughs> she was, yeah, she was uh, absolutely wonderful. She really was. But moving on though, I mean, obviously GCW, fight forever. I mean, I, I, I was watching you, I believe it was at Envy Young and Ace Perry, you was in a triple mm -hmm. threat. Um, what was that experience like then? Because I mean, the whole 24 hour thing, what was that like? It was, it was wild. Oh my gosh, my dog is is barking right now. Can I go take care of, of him? Of course you can. Okay, of course. Sorry. <laughs> Baby, it's okay. It's okay. All right, we got him. Hi, this is this is Kevin. <laughs> hey. <laughs> he didn't like the he didn't like the neighbors, but <laughs> uh, yeah, um, my my cat my cat's around somewhere as well. She usually makes an appearance, but. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. So yeah, 24 hour show. Um, that was wild. It was just, um, it was such a cool concept and just kind of fun to be back in like the wrestling atmosphere. Um, it was, I liked it cause it was like right near my house. So I could like, <laughs> it took me five minutes to get there, which is amazing. I wanted to ride my bike there, but it was too cold. And I was just looking forward to, like, the one time I could ride my bike to a venue. But maybe another time. Maybe another time. Um, yeah, Wrestling MV and Ace was, was incredible because their styles. It's a little different than mine. It's a little more fast-paced. Yeah. It's a little more traditional American indie. Um, so that's something I don't always do. So it was, it was really exciting to kind of test, my, test myself against them. Yeah. Um, it was also quite a challenge because an hour before, I had fallen off a balcony. So... Ooh. Yes, that was uh, the Cybernetico was right before that. So I uh, got really beat up in that Cybernetico <laughs> and then had to go out and have a three way. So I think that three way would have gone more my way had I not, uh, had I been a little fresher and not <laughs> thrown onto a bar by Masha Slamovich and, you know, launched off a balcony by CC Boost. But, you know, you, you got you got to make the most of your opportunities. And I'll get well, this is it. <laughs> And I, I, I heard how cold it was because I spoke to Ace Perry a few weeks ago and he told me the building was freezing. Yes. Oh, it was so cold. And like, you know, getting out there, trying to warm up before the match is such a challenge because, you know, I have little gear. Like, there's yeah. no there's no covering. I don't have a good, like, entrance gear. So I did the best I could. Um, but, like, once you're in the ring, once the bell rings, you don't notice that. Like, at least I don't. There's too much going on to worry about being cold or hungry or having yeah. to go to the bathroom that all goes out the window <laughs> how are you uh, how are you finding it as well about fans obviously i know as an artist you know the fans obviously you know their reactions you 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 feed off them how are you finding it about the fans i mean how are you adapting to that it's really hard it's really hard because the fans are such a huge that's that's what makes wrestling so wonderful is it's an interactive experience the yeah. fans are a part of it they're not just an audience they're you feed on their energy, especially mm -hmm. when you're getting beat down, when you have the fans behind you, you feel that energy. That's a tangible yeah. energy that fuels you. And you're able to get up and find that second wind or find that second gear. So not having that all the time is quite a challenge. And 
Um, I'm not someone who's too vocal in the ring. You know, I'm not yeah. one to like go up there and do improv or like, you know, talk some trash. Like I just want to get in and um, just wrestle. So like having to find ways to like be a little bit more vocal and to like add some noise is, is quite a challenge to me, but now it's just, it's what it's been for the last year. So I'm used to it. <laughs> and so it's going to be quite jarring when I go back um, April 1st at beyond, uh, there'll be fans there. So it's going to be jarring to go back to that. And also I did a taping at pro wrestling magic. Um, and they had a few fans there. So that was a little, it was jarring again, but it's yeah. exciting. It's, it's exciting to have that energy back in the room. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I'm missing it over here. We, we tell people we speak to, we've not had a wrestling show in the UK since March last year. Um, uh, mm -hmm. so where, where does it, where, where chomping at the bit to get back to a show. Um, the U S Indies have really kept us, kept us going. Um, how have you found that as well? Obviously, the U.S. Indies, how important has that been as well? That they've managed to keep going. Yeah, it's it's so important. Because, um, like, ring rust is real. Like, that's not just the thing. Like, that's, it's very real. It's so hard to get into the condition to wrestle. Yeah. You can't, you can't do burpees. You can't do anything like that to mimic what you do in the ring. Because you're running around, you're lifting someone up, you're jumping, then you're getting strangled. Like, it's so hard to keep keep your cardio up and keep your, yeah. you know, keep your breath. So just, I remember just, I think it was like five months off before I went back to training and everything hurt again, <laughs> running the ropes hurt. I was just so gassed, even though I, I did my best to stay in shape. I can um, imagine, I mean, so what was, what was that first bump like? Oof. It felt like my first bump, like first day of training again, yeah. you know, um, the ropes hurt the most. I don't think people know how much running the ropes hurts mm -hmm. and how much you have to build up that, that kind of callus. Yeah. Um, but that hurt. I thought I broke a rib, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, now, now it's, now I'm back. Uh, yeah, I've been training with, uh, with world famous CB, formerly known as Cheeseburger and Sumi oh, Sakai, yes. the worldwide dojo. So I've been able to go there regularly and, um, get back in shape and kind of get all the ring rust off. So mm -hmm. I think... Yeah. You know, the last collective back in October, mm -hmm. um, that was challenging because I was not, none of us were in the best shape because, like, we only have one match or no matches. Yeah. Um, so now, like, I I have a lot under my belt in the last couple months, so I can go into the collective weekend and to IWTV's um, events with more be more ready, more prepared. I'm in better shape, so I, I can I can handle this workload that I have. Yeah, and obviously, I know we mentioned Drew earlier, but you just mentioned Cheeseburger as well. I mean, another underrated guy. I mean, how much has he helped? Oh, my God. So much. Especially because, you know, the first four years of my career was at the Wrestle Factory and yeah. learning the Picara style, which is great for Lucha Libre, great for Catch style, great for, um, yeah, mainly those two are kind of the main styles that we do. Um, so just having this whole other influence, this whole other style where, you know, where cheeseburger is very much more like the ring of honor base yes, um, yeah. is kind of the best way to describe it. Um, which is a totally different style. It's very strike based. It's very, um, there's some strong style in there. So it's, it's different. Um, so it just, it fills a whole gap in my game. Yeah. Um, and he's, I mean, he's incredible. He's such a good wrestler. So underrated. Um, and I think he's kind of has a new, he kind of has a new look going into this year. So I think I, I expect really big things from him. I don't think it, it's going to be less playful, a bit more down the business, which is yeah. really great. And um, yeah, I think a lot of people are going to really notice uh, world famous CB this year. He's, I mean, he's great. He's, he's, and he's such a, a nice, genuine, patient trainer. Um, you know, you look forward to going to class with him. Yeah. Um, Cause it's, it's such, I respond to that. I respond to like patience and like, yeah. um, positive reinforcement. Um, so just having him as a trainer is, is huge for that. Yeah, no, I agree. He's, he's so underrated. I've been a big fan of his for a long time and I'm looking forward to seeing what comes with him this year as well. Um, now before we obviously start to wrap up as well, I mean, WrestleMania weekend, I know you're against, uh, Devin, uh, you're gonna go this is it Devin? You're gonna Devin Monroe? Uh, yes. Devon Monroe. Roach. I have a huge <laughs> a lot on my plate for that. So I have Effie's Big Gay Brunch against Devon Monroe. 
I'm also on Hot Girl Shit against Lady Frost. I'm in the Acid Cup. And then over on the IWTV side, since I won the Cassandra Cup, um, I have my IWTV title shot against Lee Moriarty, which um, really looking forward to. So that's at Family Reunion at IWTV Showcase of the Independence. Um, you know, Lee had my number when we fought in the uh, Enjoy Cup a couple yeah. months ago or a month ago. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting that kind of getting that win back. And also the IWTV title. This is my first title shot. Um, well, that, first that's time. it. Yeah. I mean, we spoke to Warhorse just after we lost to uh, to Lee. Um, mm-hmm. So I know he's got his eyes on getting that back. Um, so, I mean, maybe you defeat Lee. Then we'll see yourself versus Warhorse. Who knows? I mean, it's a, a I possibility. Would love that. There were talks of me and Warhorse um, at some point over the summer, but it just never happened. So I've been kind of, my name's been on the list for, for a title shot for a while. So, um, you know, by winning the Cassandra cup, like that solidifies that. So I have yeah. it locked in. It's signed um, April 8th at a uh, IWTV's family reunion. So um, yeah, Lee Moriarty is an incredible wrestler. It, yeah. it, it felt so close. I felt like I was so close. You know, we were both going, we both had that pinning combination that we wanted to win with um you know he had his mousetrap i had my fruit roll up so i was i had him in and he rolled right out got me in the mousetrap so <laughs> i know what to expect from him really looking forward to that again and just everything it's just like i love that i'm able to build on this momentum and each collective wrestlemania season i'm able to add a little bit more to my my calendar and you know i'm wrestling lady frost at uh alley cats hot girl yes. Shit. Well, it's funny you mentioned that because I spoke to Lady Frost last week and she's, she said, tell Edith I spoke trash about her. But then, oh. she, like, <laughs> oh. but then, she, was, then she was really, really nice as well. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's, she's sweet outside the ring, but she is rough on that bell ring. But we fought <laughs> last year at Butch versus Gore, um, which was one of my favorite matches. Yeah. Um, our styles really mesh well together. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. I think that's going to be kind of a sleeper. Um, but she's an incredible performer, and, and I am expect really big things from her this year, too. Um, of course, Devon Monroe, like, been yeah. looking forward to that. Um, I love wrestling at, at Big Gay Brunch because it really gives us a chance to... There's a lot of preconceived notions against wrestlers, against queer wrestlers, mm-hmm. um, against big character wrestlers like myself. So we love going to, to Big Gay Brunch because it's like, what can we give different? What can yeah. we, how can we catch people by surprise? Um, so I'm really excited about that opportunity with Devon, um, do something that no one's going to expect from us. I don't know what that is yet, but, um, I'm really well, looking forward to that. We can't wait to watch it. I said, I, I've, I've got the two weeks off work, which have worked perfectly for all of the shows. Yeah. Um, so we'll be watching them, but before we do wrap up, I'm, I'm, we might have a little talk about the man himself because we spoke to Effie a few weeks ago. Um, how much of a big help has, has Effie been to you? Cause we spoke to him and. I don't think people realize just what a wonderful mind for the business he has. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I remember the first time I met him, it was at Freelance Wrestling in, that was my first year. Um, So somewhere in, like, 2019. And, um, or 2018. It might have been even earlier than that. But that was the first time I met him in person. And I was with, it was me and Big Calix and Boomer Hatfield Mm. and Razorhawk now razor wing um so we were just like talking to him about social media like we're new wrestlers we don't know how to use this twitter yeah. thing so just like how thorough he thinks about his social media and just like the timing of posts and all of that stuff um so that was my first introduction to him he did like a seminar <laughs> to us but just like chit chatting in the locker room um so he's been a huge ally and a huge resource for young wrestlers especially queer wrestlers kind yeah. of navigating this very machismo world of professional wrestling so to have some to have his mind and to like see what he needs to do to push us forward to get what we need to have queer wrestlers and queer talent in leadership positions on shows to get you know he he was able to put together the big gay brunch which gives us all a platform and i think the platform i got from big gay brunch led me to being in the acid cup um so he's just huge for that and knowing what we need to do to get the representation that we need. Um, and we kind of, I just appreciate that. And I, I, I think it's, I like the foundation that he's laying for all yeah. of us to to kind of pick up and 
and take what we need and take what we deserve. Yeah, and, and on top of that, he's just a, a wonderful human being as well. Yeah, he really is. He's such a um, he is. But Edith, I I cannot tell you how much I have loved this. I mean, you are one of the best around, and I genuinely mean that. I I, I really hope you'll come back on the show as well. Yes, oh, this is a blast. <laughs> oh, absolutely. But Thank you so before, much. Before you go, let me tell everyone where they can find you, yeah, social media, any merchandise. Yes. No, uh, merchandise is all in the works right now. Um, ooh, actually, we do have a thing to plug. So um, we just did a zine uh, featuring all 35 millimeter photography um, of the Cassandra Cup. So that is on sale right now. Um, all the proceeds go to charity. Uh, so you can read up all of all of that. Um, I'm posting it all over Twitter and all, it's all yeah. over my website. So edithsurreal.com or edithsurreal.bigcartel.com. Um, you can find me at Edith Surreal on Twitter, on Instagram, on Pinterest. Really want to push this Pinterest hard. No one follows me there. My content's great. Follow me on Pinterest at Edith Surreal. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I've updated everything. So like at, at Apricots Pears slash Apricot Spears, which mm, didn't love, but that's all gone. Um, it's at Edith Surreal now. So have to like clean up me changing my like name and all my web presence so at you the surreal on everything excellent well again i i cannot thank you enough i i'm a huge fan big things are coming lee moriarty better watch out because you know i know that title's coming to you yeah. um but for now edith surreal thank you so much thank you for having me this was a blast anytime